welcome back to the channel I appreciate you guys coming in watching commenting letting me know uh, what I can do better um, we're just doing some automotive service kind of stuff here and I'm gonna show you why it's not always the best idea just to grab a used rear end and throw it into something and take off down the road probably should do some inspection and servicing and those kind of things um, so let's look at the uh, the gear lube in this rear end oh my goodness metallic like big time metallic in this thing yeah I have actually tried to service and rebearing this rear end before and cross bolt comes out fine cross pin however not so easy to get out um, the cross bolt this time I had to grab a hold of it with vice grips to get it to pull out I mean everything's coated in 90 weight gear oil right now so tough to see anything but yeah she is uh, pretty scarred up I have all new bearings gears carrier all the internal parts for this rear mainly because uh, it's a 273 or whatever ratio with the auto overdrive it like never gets out of uh, second gear it seems like so we want to be able to use all four gears in an overdrive trans and uh, hey we're going to try popping this cross pin out so get ready this one is not just going to push out real easily. Sounds like it's hitting on the pinion. Maybe it will come out this time. And that is not hitting on anything other than itself. spin doesn't want to come out I'll show you in a little bit how much beating on it I have done it's time to like get this thing out of here I'm tired of messing with it so I have the uh, special edition super hot one size fits all and we are going to cut that cross pin out of there I do have a squirt bottle of water I've waited for quite a while for all the gear oil to drain out of here I have a fan blowing across here to try to keep from uh, breathing too much of this nasty stuff this comes a point when you gotta take it this is any way you can do it here. I'm hoping I don't screw up everything else in the rear end. But I think we'll be okay.
Yeah. Let's say that was the easy way. Yep, there we go. So I would not do that if I was trying to save anything on the rear. <laughs> Bearings, gears, any of that, because uh, we did use some heat right there. Uh, but you can see, after all my beating, that's as far out as I got that pin. And I tried vice grips, twisting, um, I used an air hammer, uh, everything on there that I had at my disposal she just didn't want to come out so that's what you get man it got cold out here yeah I really don't understand how it can be below freezing but it's still water falling out of the sky and it is kind of cool kind of eerie this is when your electric goes out so i hate that and the wind's starting to blow so it's been icing all day here in hog shooter i don't know what the deal is but i know the deal in the shop is it's nice and warm let's go in there i've spent about five bucks at the car wash got this thing pretty clean i mean we're putting all new bearings and parts in it we ought to clean this thing up make it uh kind of like it building an engine if we start off clean we're going to do much better later on so i'm part of the way in the reassembly of the housing here but to get it to this point i had to do some stuff you got bearing races down in inside on this pinion there's two you've got to knock those bearing races out you got to drive new races in and like i don't always go out and buy every single tool for the jobs that I need to do. Um, I've got a couple of cardboard boxes over here of various rear end stuff from building other rear ends. What I did for these races is I took my old ones when I knocked them out. I went down to the farm store and bought me some great big washers and just did a quick weld or tack weld around the edges to hold that thing in so I could set it in there and then... Um, got a funky combo here i thought about just using a giant piece of all thread with a bolt and pulling them in but i figured what the heck i've watched lots of videos guys just beat those things in all the time i have this stub shaft right here it's kind of a blank it fits inside that piece of pipe that all centers up and with the rear end not in the car i can rotate it on my jack stand straight up and down and be able to drive stuff in really easily um, it's kind of nice and kind of a pain in the butt all at the same time because uh, you're not able to get to the pinion in real easy i've got this metal can so i can raise this thing up and prop it in place when i need to that all works out real good um, but i drove the races in with my homemade tool i built one for each side so those will go in the safe box for sure then i wanted to talk about getting the shim off the bottom of this pinion um, i took the old race and by the way look at that race that thing is awful and i've chipped it up a bit being rough on it but i took a cutoff wheel and cut into the race and then beat on it with a chisel and it actually you can see that parting line there where that thing split and you i don't know you may not want to do this on a pinion that you want to save and um, there's other methods lots of them for taking that race off there's actually tools made to do it but eh, i don't want to buy everything so i used the cutoff wheel you can see the cut mark that i made in my pinion there no big deal we're not going to reuse it try to resell it nothing like that um something else when you're disassembling take your caps and mark them and when you mark them mark them with the differential sitting up and down so like an r it only goes one way so i know that that cap came off that side facing that direction the left same deal got a bearing a brand new bearing same one you're going to use in your final setup and take this inside 
diameter and open it up so that I can just slip it down onto the pinion and slide it back off. Of course, we'd be talking about the big bearing down at the bottom here. Um, I want to be able to slide that one off. I, I wasted an upper bearing too so that I have one there that slips out because having to drive that pinion out of there every time, if you got to change your setup multiple times, you can damage those threads. And it's just a, a headache to have to knock stuff on and beat it off every time. So, at any rate, I, I've done that with two bearings on the pinion that's in here. Um, you open the inner diameter, slides on and off, and then I went ahead and just put the old crush sleeve in it and tightened this dude up where it has some rolling resistance to it. I also put some oil on those bearings when you put them in. Don't put them in there dry. Uh, now after you get done grinding those uh, inside diameters of those bearings, you can put them in and you're tightening to a rotational force on this uh, pinion. I ordered a torque wrench that will read that, but it's not here yet. It will be before I get this thing finished. Um, my main goal today was just to get this set up to this point. I've driven new races in. I mean, there's lots of videos out on YouTube on how to rebuild a rear end from beginning to end. Um, yeah, but you guys understand every one of these tapered bearings is going to have a race that matches it. And we need to keep them together. That's why I want to use the same brand and part number bearing when I'm doing my setup bearings. The machining tolerances are close enough on these things. They, they'll go back in and you won't really have any change. What you're going for is uh, 25 inch pounds of rotational force to turn this. So that's like tightening the pinion nut up until you have all the slack gone and 25 inch pounds of force here. If you put too much, you can burn the bearings up. If you don't have it tight enough, it'll keep backing off. You'll just have constant problems. So we got that force. Then the next step is to measure pinion depth. Well, they sell lots of tools to do this. And man, if you want to spend the money, go for it. What I did was I just took a file, because files are typically very flat, put it onto this flat surface, held on with two bolts that are just snugged up, take my, just my digital calipers, get them zeroed out, which they're pretty close right there, set it on the edge of the file, you measure to this bearing cap, and you want to verify that you got it like pretty darn close when you're measuring there. Try to get it as square as you can. And I'm filming this now, but I spent a bunch of time measuring, trying to get the same exact measurement. So there's my measurement there. I could go ahead and measure that overall depth and then subtract this from it. I'm going to use this handy little zero feature on my caliper. Zero that thing out. Set this up here. And we're going to go down we're going to measure that surface. So it's tough to get it perfectly square. Um, I just did, have done it about six times. And I'm happy with the measurement that I'm getting. Um, it just takes a little bit of playing with, guys. Be patient. <laughs> hey, come on work for daddy. All right, so final measurement 2.823 and we're supposed to be 0.824 is what that last number is there. Um, took a couple of tries. Um, there's a shim that fits here on, on our pinion and I had to buy a complete another set of bearings uh, to do this with because I sacrificed uh, these two and then when I got my original bearings in, they weren't uh, really what I had ordered. There wasn't enough stuff in, in one kit. So, 
All right, so here's parts pile number one. Um, I've got the install kit that I ordered from the company. Um, doesn't come with these, but comes with your pinion shims, carrier shims. These would be carrier bearings, and then it also had both pinion bearings in it. Crush sleeve, um, yeah, a seal, new bolts for the ring gear, marking compound, and thread locker, and then a new pinion nut also. This is one setup. I actually used the pinion bearings to make my um, bearings to do my setup with. Um, comes with this new crush sleeve. That could be handy. And then over here, I've got a Yukon setup. It came with a new seal, <clears throat> the pinion bearings, the carrier bearings. Um, so I'm going to be utilizing these um, pinion bearings here. The races are in the housing. So I've got a big and a small bearing. That'll fix the pinion up. I use this crush sleeve since I've already cut it out of the packaging. This nut looks like a locking nut and it's very similar to the OE. That'll be the one we use. We've got our marking compound and our brush to paint it on with here. So I'll just continue working out of this box and leave as much of this one together as I can. It just was weird to me. This is a small install kit apparently because it doesn't have any shims at all in it, but everything else is there. I mean, you can see the box. She's been sitting on the shelf for a minute. I bought it quite a while ago. All right, so here's our carrier. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. Um, I've already taken it and I've put the new carrier bearings on. They're pressed all the way down on there um, till you get no gap on them. And I, I do have a, just a cheap Harbor Freight press. Works great for stuff like this. If I had to use a press every day, I probably wouldn't buy that one. So this is fully assembled. It looks nice. Um, cross pins in it. We'll have to pull that out when it comes time to put axles in. But we've got to get it set up first. Um, save your old races and things because they come in handy for driving tools and different stuff. Um, at any rate, we've got to take our file. We've got to file this edge flat. I've got to file the ring gear uh, edge flat and then we'll start a couple of bolts in this thing uh, to line it up before we drop it completely on. And then we'll have the carrier ready to set into the housing. One note, always keep these together. That's actually marked, it's a one. And I have a one marked on the, hmm. I thought I had a one marked on my carrier. Yeah, there it is. It's right here. So.
All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring you guys in here, show you what we got going on right now at this point. I have one of the stock shims on this side, and then I have uh, a small shim pack over here. You can see you got a thick shim, a thick shim, and then a sandwich of thin shims in between it. Now, the issue here is our backlash setting. Um, this should be, I think, around six thousandths, and we are like 20, yeah, 20 too much, 23. So we're within 15 now. 14 or so on our backlash setting. So that was the largest of the old shims on the ring gear side. Stack of uh, aftermarket shims over here. Got the two thick ones and a 7,000 shim in the center. And that kind of gets us in a happy spot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bolt these caps on, torque them, recheck everything. One, one thing that I've found that's uh, really good when you're doing this kind of stuff, if you have the time, get things close and stop on a happy point. Don't stop, don't uh, fight it. If it's fighting and things don't seem to want to go, walk away from it for a little bit and come back. I torqued the caps back down on it. It took out about three thousandths, but we're at 11 and we need to be seven to nine. So I want to, since this is, everything's brand new, I want to be close to that seven thousandths backlash mark. So I went back and pulled the carrier out, did a bunch of measuring and um, decided that my pinion shims, this shim right here, it's uh, 26 thousandths. So I'm going with a stack of two that come in my kit uh, to make 28. It's about what I was short. Um, so these things just slap down on there. And then this is my, my bearing that uh, I'm using for setup. So you can just drop that dude on. So you can see if I had to change these out and I'd already pressed the bearing I was going to use on there, then I'd have to get in here and I would have to press that bearing off. And number one, I don't have the tool to uh, separate that. Um, they actually make a special tool for it. And number two, even if I had the tool, nine times out of ten, you mess up the cage on the bearing. So, All right, guys, a whole lot warmer inside here. No ice yet. Still have light. That's a good thing. The uh, the setup on the rear end is, I believe, I've finally gotten it. So I started out writing measurements down to the pinion. Um, and what's really weird is this side is 20 thousandths or 9 thousandths different than this side height wise from this surface to the center of the ring gear which is how you set the pinion depth. You measure center, so I have my straight edge across there, measured down to the cap face. That's the middle of the cap, right? Zero the caliper, and then measure all the way down. I showed it in the video, but it was way different from side to side, so we just kind of started with the side that was the lowest and then that didn't quite work out so I had to raise the pinion back up to get the contact pattern more in the center of this um, couldn't really go exactly off their measurements but you can see uh, where the pattern is there we're pretty much centered up on the tooth and we're center in and out we're not too close to the the toe or of the drive side there coast side these two are kind of out a little bit but the rest of them look like they're wiping across the middle so that's pretty good 
I'm going by our little picture here. They're showing the, the coast pattern like anywhere but all the way out at the edge is pretty much what we're after. So our backlash, that was another one. You know, you're moving shims from one side to the other. So I ended up with 255 on this side and 216 on this side. Um, it doesn't matter what you do. You just have to move equal measurements from side to side or as close as you can. So on my dial indicator here, got zero and then there, that's my backlash. Um, I struggled for a couple times getting it past or closer than 12, um, but it calls for seven to nine. And that's not a lot. So here we are, we're at we're at 7.88531. Really close to eight. So we're gonna go with that. I figure a brand new gear set is probably gonna lap itself in. And remember, still have the setup bearings and I just reuse the old crush sleeve to apply tension to this pinion. So I'm hoping that the everything I've read is true and that the bearings are really close there um, to the same tolerances. So now we got our gear set up. I am going to take these ring gear bolts back out, Loctite them with red Loctite and torque them to... Alright, so all the setup and everything is done. So here is my final installation of my large pinion bearing. I used the uh, race that I cut off earlier. It's kind of chipped up on this edge, but there's plenty of surface to push and it's pushing directly against the bearing, not against the cage or the rollers. I did have to use this plus a piece of pipe with a socket on top just to make her fit in the old press here and everything work out. Um, I left my shims in here. Pretty tough to see on the camera, but I got.
Alright, from what I've seen and read, watched videos about, there's a lot of mixed opinion about using a impact on this. I don't see any harm in it. I mean, we're still, we got a ton of end play here before we even get up to the point of crushing. So, I'm going to use my impact. Because we're just... I'm going to have to turn the air up to get us there. Hey guys, you almost let me forget to put this seal in before I put the yoke on here. Yeah, so I was feeling kind of bad about putting this on without painting it. So at least uh, while I took it off, it let me go ahead and get some kind of a coating on there to keep it from uh, rusting so bad. But right now, we gotta put this seal in here and we're gonna try to set you guys up where you'll stay. <clears throat> Man, y'all are like cantankerous though. Okay, so when I put these in, I don't want to use just a ton of silicone. So it looks like a lot, but that's all I'm going to put around the whole thing. And we're going to just use the old finger and kind of smear that around here. Just so we have enough to seal this thing up. I mean, the last thing you want is to have gear oil seeping out of your differential that you've spent all this time putting together and ensuring everything's good. Um, one thing I'll say is like if you get this stuff inside of the case it can go in there and fill in spaces, clog stuff up, keep things from operating the way they should. So definitely a good idea to take the inside of that seal surface. It is going to be what's exposed to gear oil and wipe the silicone off of that edge. So now we have nothing there. I will go back and I'll lubricate this um, when I get to that point. Kind of struggling right now because uh, we've got all this ice and no one can make a delivery here to the hog shooter shop because we're kind of in the rural area and okay come on I know you want to go ah. so we just try to be even with it as we're putting this in. I'm also trying not to hit my pinion because it is right where I need it to be. I was lucky that I was able to take the actual yoke off without it dropping the pinion down inside of my disc. So now we've got that on did have a little bit of stuff shoot out the side there. I'm gonna go ahead and take and wipe this thing relatively clean. And there we go. So yeah, orders are not able to be delivered. So I'm waiting on a torque wrench to measure the rotational force of this uh, differential. Once that gets here, then we can go ahead and we can do what we need to do. 
got to keep thinking though I cannot take this thing and leave it on there because I will forget to put grease on that and if I do that then I'll burn the seal or the seal will cut into the flange of that yoke which it already has you can see that line right there but I can't catch a fingernail in it so it's just really a mark more than anything else but I do want to have there's two lips to this seal and I want that back edge to be up on this sealing surface as well so no oil will come out. The outer part of this seal is really just for dust getting in and to keep the oil out that's the inner seal or to keep the oil from leaking out. So yeah we're gonna get that thing lubricated before I put the nut on there but I'm gonna set it here so I don't have to worry about it and hey in a few more days they'll be able to get up and down the roads 